what I've set up here is a series circuit. Okay, so I've got two light bulbs in series uh, connected to a power supply that's putting out, um, pushing six volts through. Okay, um, I'm going to be using this circuit to explain the concept of voltage drop, which is something that many students have trouble with understanding. Think of voltage drop as um, the power supply outputs six volts, right? So Brand new current comes out of pressure of six volts. As the current passes through each component, each component, it loses some of that pressure until the last component, and think of it as the entire, the total voltage drop after the last component uh, equals to the original voltage boost or the voltage supply of the power supply. And okay, that's an easy way to think of it. Um, so let's have a look at this. Uh, I have here a voltmeter. What I'm going to do is firstly I'm going to measure the initial power supply voltage. Okay, and it says here 6 volts, but let's just confirm that with an uh, independent voltmeter. <laughs> right, so we're pushing out uh, 6.1 volts. So this is slightly inaccurate. Uh, probably trust this one more. 6.1 volts. 6.1 volts is the supply voltage, which is the voltage that, um, if you think of it, before the current passes through any component. Okay, now the, compo the, 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 um, the voltage is passing through two light bulbs here in series. If we measure the voltage across any component, so say here or here, it'll give us the voltage drop across that particular component. Okay? So, let's do this first light bulb here. Just connect it like that, and I get a reading of 2.99 volts. 2.99 volts across this light bulb. So what I've done there is I've measured the voltage drop um, across this light bulb. Okay. And if I do the same with this, The negative indicates that I've got the polarity switch, which doesn't matter. I'm just interested in the number. I've got 3.09. What do you notice? You notice that 3.09 plus, what was this one? I forgot the number. 3.09 plus 2.99 is approximately equal to the supply voltage, 6.1. Uh, 6.08 so that's how you measure voltage drop again just to recap think of voltage drop as every time the current passes through a component the voltage drops okay and when components are in series here's the other important thing when when components are in series like in this manner the voltage drop is split according to the relative resistance of the components now the reason why there's an even split, although it was a slight difference, one was 3.09 and one was 2.99, the slight difference is because no two, no two light bulbs are sort of made identical to the, to the single atom. They, they're, they're slightly different in some way. Maybe the filament is a few nanometers longer or thicker or whatever in one compared to the other. So anyway, the, 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 the small differences make the, um, account for the fact that we didn't get exactly the equal, um, exactly equal voltage drops across both light bulbs. Um, but they were pretty equal. One was 2.99, one was 3.09. So, so they're equal, they're very close to equal because they're the same light bulbs and they're in series. Right? If I put, if I put a different component, if I replace this light bulb with a, with a different component, I would get a, a different distribution of um, voltage drops. It doesn't matter what the resistances actually are, but what matters is the resistance ratios. For example, this resistance, whatever it is, I don't care about the number, but this resistance equals this resistance. Therefore, the voltage drop equals the voltage drop of this one. This one and this one have the same voltage drops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace this component here with this different component, this coil here, which um, it could be anything, but I, I choose this because it's like I have it lying around. Um, I would expect this to have a much um, lower resistance. So as a result, this would have a lower voltage drop compared to this light bulb. So now let's test it. The voltage drop of this should be higher than 3 volts as what we expected before, what we measured before. And I'm right, it's 
getting the voltage drop across this is almost all of the supply voltage is 5.54 our supply voltage is 6 volts just a reminder so 5.54 is the voltage drop across the light bulb now and across the first component we'll measure the voltage drop here and we notice the voltage drop is only 0 0.52 0 0.52 volts what that indicates is the voltage drop ratios are in the same ratios as the resistances to confirm that uh, well actually we can't confirm that because you see the problem as soon as I try to measure the resistance of this light bulb here you can't use a you can't use an ohmmeter while current is passing through it um, I don't really want to explain why. Uh, in order to measure the resistance of things, you need to um, you need to actually disconnect it. And when, as soon as I disconnect the light bulb, uh, remember the first part. I explained what an ohmic resistor is and a non-ohmic resistor. All things in reality are non-ohmic. Ohmic resistors are just purely theoretical. It's like a black body. So it's a theoretic, theoretical physical object. Okay. Um, so it doesn't actually exist. So this is a non-ohmic resistor. As soon as I unplug it and try to measure the resistance, I get a reading that is irrelevant because resistance depends on temperature. So I'm getting a, um, I'm getting a resistance of like, uh, oh, it keeps growing. No. I'll uh, poke it in like this. It'll give me a more stable reading. About 2.6 ohms, but that's obviously false because um, the current that we're getting through, and if you did the calculations before, 5.5 volts and a current of um, let's do, it, do that. So if you look at the power supply when I when I hook this up, six volts total, 2.0.23 amps, um, and a voltage drop is 5.5 volts. If you did the calculation, the resistance implied is uh, what 5.5 divided by amp. 0.23, 23.9 ohms. 23.9 ohms. So um, before, when we measured the um, resistance in room temperature, it was only 2.6. Now we're getting 23.9 ohms, almost a factor of 10 increase um, due to the temperature, the elevated temperature of the light bulb filament. Um, anyway, I digress. The the fact is, the resistance of this and the resistance of the coil are in the same ratio as the voltage drops. As the voltage drops. So. Theoretically, all right, theoretically, if I have two components, now I don't care about these, but let's just say now I have two components. This component here, the light bulb, has a, uh, say the light bulb has a resistance of 9 ohms, and the coil has a resistance of 1 ohm, and the input voltage is 6 volts. Then, um, to predict the, the voltage drops, you would divide it into 10 equal parts, so each part is 0 0.6 volts, and so this will get 5.4 volts voltage drop, and this will get 0 0.6 volts voltage drop. Um, so that's, that's an easy way to think about it. Just remember the voltage drops are in equal proportion to the resistances of the components in series circuits. Okay? Uh, for the next part, we're going to look at how series and parallel circuits work.